kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, let's talk about matter and let's find out what's the matter with the matter. Let's begin. So what actually the meaning of matter is? In simple words, we can define matter as anything which has some mass and which takes up some space that means which has some volume of course when we talk about matter in chemistry we always think about terms like elements mixtures or compounds you got it now how do we identify each one of those and again there are more classifications for each of the type of matter. This is a chart which explains to you how we are going to have that process for analyzing and identifying the type of matter. So the very first question we are going to ask ourselves is can we physically separate the matter easily? If the answer for the question is yes then we are going to go to mixture side. If the answer to the question is no, we cannot separate that easily by filtration or evaporation, then it is going to be a pure substance. Is that simple, right? Now let's go back to the mixture side. There are two different types of mixtures and they are based upon how they appear. How is the nature? Is it uniform throughout or not? If it is uniform, then we call it homogeneous mixture and if it is not uniform then we call it heterogeneous mixture now it gets a little more complicated the heterogeneous mixture is again classified into two different types colloid and suspension we will talk about that in a little while let's turn to pure substance so a pure substance could be an element or a compound how do we know which one is that? We have to find out what is it made up of. If it is made up of only one type of atoms, that is an element. For example, if it's hydrogen, it will be only H. If it is chlorine, it will be only Cl. Whereas in case of compound, there will be more than two elements. For example, H2O is a compound which you all know about, right? So let's move on and find out more about matter. Let's begin with pure substances. So the pure substance is something we know has a uniform and unchanging composition. Out of them, elements is one of the pure substance. And where do we find the elements? We found those on this beautiful chart which you have here which is called as periodic table wonders about mixtures yes mixtures are always wonderful look at that trail mix that's my favorite so what is a mixture mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances but what is special about that each one of them it retains its individual chemical properties. So we have here MNM and resins, they will retain their sweet taste. Alrighty, what are compounds then? Compounds also have two or more elements together, but they are not just mixed, they are chemically bonded. A compound is not easy to make we need to make sure there is a chemical change which takes place there either to make or break a compound now what do we need for mixtures we need a physical change for combining elements into a mixtures or even for separating them and there are two simple processes for separation of mixture one of them is shown right over here and that is filtration if we have a solid mixed up with a liquid this is one of the simple method we use 
and over here what we have is the second process and that is evaporation if i have a solid and liquid mixed together i can also opt for evaporating that liquid and i can get that solid which is precious back in pure form now there are two types of mixtures as we discussed one is called as hetero and other is called as homo the way we remember is hetero they do not look same throughout or they are not uniform whereas when we talk about homo they look same throughout or they are uniform in nature let's get to the different types of heterogeneous mixture one is called suspension and other is called as polyd a suspension is something like this sand plus water and if we get sand mixed with water the easiest way to separate that is let it sit and when we let it sit for some time sand will settle down and we will get pure water on the top whereas this is an example of colloid and milk is one of the example colloids cannot be separated by allowing them to sit or stand also keep in mind both colloids and suspension they have a unique property which is called as tyndall effect and what does that mean it is scattering of light alrighty let's move on to homogeneous mixture we can also call them as solutions in solutions particles are extremely small and we cannot separate them by filtration like suppose we are mixing sugar and water together we cannot separate that easily by filtration so let's find out examples of mixtures in different phases what is the example of gas in liquid you all drink it soda what is soda it is carbon dioxide in water gas in gas the example is something which we breathe in air air contains nitrogen oxygen small amount of water vapor also should be there but basically it's a mixture of gas to gas liquid and liquid mixture we can think about many i think immediately of gasoline gasoline has several liquids mixed together and the example of solid and the example of solid mixed with solid will be trail mix and there could be of course more examples which you might come across with now what are the differences between a solution a colloid and a suspension so in this chart it's all summarized a type of mixture if it's a solution it will be homogeneous whereas both colloid suspensions are heterogeneous then we have particle size it increases from solutions to suspensions it is smallest medium and it is large as we go from solutions to suspension what about separate from standing that's only suspensions can do that and both these we cannot separate by standing can we separate by filtration again we can only separate suspensions by filtration not the solution and not the colloid what about mine both colloids and suspensions can scatter the light and what do we call that that is called tyndall effect whereas solutions will not scatter the light and the last thing example the simple example for solution is salt water or sugar water when we don't even know there is salt in water unless we taste it milk is the example of colloid which will be scattering light and we cannot separate the components easily and for suspensions i always think about vinegar at salad dressing where there are a lot of things floating in the dressing and i need to make sure i shake it before i use because otherwise a suspension can easily get settled if we let it stand if we are if we are given an unknown substance and our job is to classify it as a solution or a colloid are suspensions how do we find out 
we use the properties which we learned just now. So just to collide and suspension, they have a property which is called as Tyndall effect by which they can scatter the light. Solutions will not have that property. Also, you know very well that a suspension, we can separate easily the components when we let it stand. So we will begin with Tyndall effect first. And if a substance shows Tyndall effect, it will be either a colloid or suspension. But if the answer to that is no, we know for sure that is a solution. So if it is a colloid or suspension, what can we do? We can have a second test which will be allow it to stand. And if it separates, then that will be a suspension. And if it is no separation, then that goes to a colloid. Let's move on. There are different types of matter given to us here and our job is to identify if it's an element, if it's a mixture and if it is mixture, what type of mixture or if it is a compound. Okay, now there is one easy way, easy trick to identify that. I'm going to tell you something. If it's a pure substance, and remember a pure substance could be an element or it could be a compound. For both of these, we can write a chemical formula. So, in a way I'm telling you, if you cannot write the chemical formula, it must be a mixture. On this slide here, I have the answers ready for our previous slides. But let's find out why we got those answers. Air is mixture. Air contains nitrogen, oxygen, and of course water vapor, and to some extent some other gases also. But it's a homogeneous mixture. Rust has a formula. Fe2O3, more than one element, so it's a compound. Ice tea has ice floating in the tea, so with that it will be heterogeneous mixture. Chicken soup, of course, heterogeneous mixture. Dirt is heterogeneous because there are a lot of different types of dirt mixed in dirt. Chlorine has formula Cl2, that makes it unique element there. Sugar has this complex formula and it has more than one element. So it's a compound. Gasoline is of course a mixture. There are different types of liquids, flammable liquids mixed up. Water has a formula H2O, more than two elements. So it will be a compound. Oxygen is O2, one type of element. Hydrogen H2, only one type of atom. So it's an element. And then we keep on moving. Ketchup, granite, orange juice, they all become heterogeneous mixture because they all look different throughout. They are not uniform. Sodium chloride, baking soda, they both have formula and they have, they have more than one element in that. So that will be compound. Sugar water is homogeneous mixture. Concrete is heterogeneous. Concrete is carbon dioxide has formula. CO2, it's more than two different type of elements. So it's a compound. And aluminum it's just a L which is an element so you got it you can easily identify any type of matter into an element mixture and compound and you also know if it's a mixture what kind of mixture you got all right guys I hope you enjoyed the video I'll see you in next video bye bye